Hello everyone, welcome back to the module 1 of your network security training. In this video, we are going to learn networking protocols in the TCP IP protocol stack or you can say protocol suite. So in our previous classes, in our previous videos, we have discussed about protocol stack, TCP, about TCP IP and its protocol stack. Now we are going to learn what are the protocols that are used in that particular protocol stack and what is the work of those protocols in that particular layer. All right. So it's also known as protocol suit. So basically a protocol suit is a collection of protocols that are specifically designed to work together. All right, and they are arranged in a particular stack or in a particular suit if you are talking about TCP IP model. So here we will be discussing TCP IP model and the protocol suits or the protocols that are implemented on that particular layers of TCP IP model. All right, so let's first check out the TCP IP layers and the protocols that are related to those layers. So as we have already discussed about TCP IP model and its layers that we have four layers in TCP IP model, network access layer, internet layer, transport layer, and then we have application layer. So accordingly, we have respective protocols related to those layers. Like if we are talking about network access layer, in that particular layer, we use protocols like Ethernet, Token Ring, Frame Relay. All right. On Internet layer, we use IP, ICMP, IGMP, and IPsec. This is for IP security. It's known as IPsec protocol. At Transport layer, we use protocols such as TCP and UDP. And at application layer, we use protocols such as HTTP, HTTPS, all the protocols that are related to applications, like some of the applications you use, like you browsing the internet, you use emailing servers, right? You use file transfer protocols. So these are pro the protocols that are related to application, like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, Telnet, NTP, DHCP, IMAP, LDAP, SSH, and TLS SSL. So these are the protocols we are gonna discuss so that you can understand what, how they work, what they work, and why it's implemented on these particular layers. All right, so let's begin with our first protocol, HTTP and HTTPS that works on application layer. So first we are going, going to discuss application layer networking protocols and HTTP, HTTPS. So basically uh, in address bar of your browser, you have noticed that either you are getting HTTP or HTTPS at the time of browsing, right? So in short, both of these are the protocols that are that use the information of a particular website is exchanged between web server and the web browser. So basically HTTP offers set of rules and standards that govern how any information can be transmitted on the world wide web. So if we are talking about HTTP or HTTPS, these are the set of standards or you can say the rules that decides that how your information can be transmitted on the World Wide Web. So it's the HTTPS version is the highly advanced and secure version of HTTP. All right, here you can see the HTTP is the application protocol as we all know that because here we are discussing all the protocols that are related to application layer. So definitely it's application protocol for distributed and collaborative hypermedia information system. All right, HTTP 
and HTTPS. There is a little bit difference between HTTP and HTTPS. HTTPS is the more is the secure version of HTTP. You can say HTTPS use SSL and TLS technology to encrypt or to secure the data that is being transmitted over the internet. So if you want to protect your information, if you want to uh, make the integrity of your data, then you have to use HTTPS related websites or the websites that have implemented HTTPS protocol. All right, the default port of HTTP is 80 and for HTTPS, it use 443 port. All right, then next we have FTP. So FTP is file transfer protocol. This is a standard internet protocol for transmitting files between computers on the internet over TCP IP connections. All right, it's a client server protocol that relies on two communication channels between client and server, basically a command channel for controlling the conversation and a data channel for transmitting the file content. All right, FTP is often secured with SSL or TLS that is called FTPS. So FTPS is the secure version of FTP protocol. All right, if you are using FTP, that means the, that particular protocol is not secure. So don't use FTP protocol. Besides that, you can use FTPS protocol that uses SSL and TLS technology to make the security of your data. All right, or replaced with SSH file that is also known as SFTP. So the secure versions of FTP protocol are FTPS and SFTP. All right. The default port for FTP is 21 and for FTP it's 990. Now let's talk about Telnet. So Telnet is basically a protocol that provides a command line interface for communications with a remote device or server. All right. Telnet provides users with a bi-directional interactive text oriented communication system by utilizing a virtual terminal over 8 byte. Telnet is basically a command, a user command and an underlying TCP IP protocol for accessing remote computers. So by using Telnet protocol, you can access, you can co uh, remotely connect to your, to the other computers. Telnet is basically stands for Teletype Network and in short, we call it Telnet. All right. Through Telnet, an administrator or another user can access someone else computer remotely. As I said, that by using this protocol, you can connect remotely to some of the computers. All right. It establishes connection at port 23. Now next we have NTP that is Network Time Protocol. So it basically used to synchronize computer clock times in a network. It basically synchronize the clocks of computers to some time reference. All right, it's an internet standard protocol developed by Professor David. All right, the term NTP applies to both the protocol and the client server programs that run on computers. It works on port 123. The next we have DHCP. So it's dynamic host control link protocol. DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol basically or control protocol you can also say so it's 
for dynamically allocating the IP addresses to the devices that are connecting to your network. So it's basically a network management protocol that is used to, design, to dynamically assign an IP address to any device or node or on a network so they can communicate using IP. That is basically if we are talking about some years back. So your network or your devices are not configured with DHCP. So what you had to do, you had to assign the IP addresses manually to if you are just having a complete network and somebody else is connecting to your network. So you had to assign manually the IP address to that particular computer system. But today the devices are using DHCP protocol. All right. They have they are, have implemented DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol. And by using this protocol, the devices can get the IP addresses dynamically. Like if I just want to connect with a particular network, so the network administrator doesn't need to assign the IP address manually. It will be assigned automatically, right? So if any system is requesting to connect to that particular network, it basically gives the request command. All right. So in reply, it will get the IP addresses dynamically or automatically you can say all right so DHCP port number for server is 67 and for client is 68 so DHCP is dynamic host configuration protocol that manages the configuration of your network of your IP addresses and you don't need to manually assign IP addresses to all the network devices Instead, you can, it can basically give the IP addresses automatically. Now, next we have IMAP. So IMAP is basically stands for Internet Message Access Protocol. All right. Is basically a standard protocol for accessing email on a remote server from a local client. IMAP is basically an application layer protocol all right and here you can see imap version 3 latest version 3 is another main protocol that used to retrieve mail from a server imap does not delete the content from the mailbox of the server if you are using imap if you basically are using email clients like we use uh, some of the email clients in windows or we have number of email clients like thunderbird and all so if you are using any of the email client like outlook if, if you are using then you can you are connected by using this protocol imap see if you are just forwarding emails online like if you are using your browser to forwarding emails then you are using smtp protocol but if you are using email clients like outlook then you are connected with the imap protocol all right so this is the way you can retrieve the mails by using email clients the default port for imap is 143 and secure is 993 all right then next we have ldap so ldap is basically lightweight directory access protocol it's for lightweight directory access protocol so as the name suggests it is a lightweight client server protocol. All right. For accessing directory services, specifically X.500 based directory services. All right. It, these services, LDAP services, run so over TCP IP or other connection oriented transfer services. A standard application protocol for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information services over an IP network. All right, it uses a relatively simple string based query to extract information from Active Directory. Like 
it basically uh, you can use a, com a particular commands it has some number of queries or the commands that you can use to retrieve any of the information related to the active directory all right the tcp and udp port for ldap traffic is 389 now next let's talk about ssh so ssh is secure shell also known as secure socket shell it's basically a network protocol that gives users particularly system administrators a secure way to access a computer over an unsecured network all right ssh also refers to the suite of utilities that implement the ssh protocol it provides strong authentication and encrypted data communication between two computers all right it provides several alternative options for strong authentication and it protects the communications security and integrity with strong encryption so basically ssh is the protocol that is used to make the security or the integrity of your data the standard port for tcp for tcp port for ssh is 22 all right then next we have tc tls and ssl so ssl is the standard technology for keeping an internet connection secure and safeguarding any sensitive data tls stands for transport layer security is just an updated version or more secure version of ssl so here you can see uh, we have ssh and tls ssl so these are the protocols that are used to make to secure your data that is being transmitted over the network ssh protocol uses encryption to secure the connection between a client and a server all right SSL is also the technology that is used to make secure security of your data and safeguarding any sensitive information. So if your website or if basically you are using HTTPS protocol or FTPS protocol, basically the security protocols, if you are using, that means they are implemented by using TLS and SSL technology. All right, so these are the protocols that are used at application layer. Now, in the next video, we will be talking about other protocols. So stay tuned.